Hey, and welcome to another episode of Wrench. On today's show, we're going to continue to work on mounting the Subaru EZ30R into my 1969 Porsche 911 S. <laughs> So before all the plumbing, before all the radiators, before all the oil and the cooling and everything we need to do to get this car running, the first thing that has to happen is the engine has to be mounted into the car itself. The way it's configured, and because Subaru puts their engine mounts towards the rear of the engine, or in this case towards the front of the car, versus where Porsche puts theirs, which is on the rear, or the front of the engine, which is the rear of the car, a custom cradle has to be created. To be honest, I've been a bit intimidated by creating the engine cradle for this because Subaru motor mount angles are really weird. They don't just go up this way, they go up this way and then they angle like that. And I thought the fabrication would be really wacky because all the weird angles that would have to be cut to make this thing work. It was then, uh, ironically, that I got into a conversation with a guy named Ian McGailey uh, on Facebook and Ian runs a website called Coldwater914 Com. So Ian makes a number of products for 914s, who by the way are way, way, way ahead of us in terms of Subaru engine swaps uh, in the 911 world. So he reached out, he actually has a laser cut engine cradle. He says, dude, I'm just finishing up these prototypes. Do you want to try one? I said, yes, I do. So here is this beautiful piece of kit, which is a laser cut engine cradle. I'll let you guys see this. Look at this. With all the wacky angles that I was talking about. And what he's done here is he's made holes for inch and a half tubing. So all I really need to do basically, um, if you guys watch the video I did, I think two videos ago now where I created my little engine mounts. So the idea is I have to bolt this thing up and then just run tubing to the hard mounts that I've created uh, both on the transmission and the engine side. The problem is because this is a prototype, this ended up being about a half inch shorter than it needs to be. So rather than just be intimidated by it and wait for weeks while they get that all sorted out, I'm gonna cut it in half and I'm gonna make it work. So what I have to do here is cut down the center. I'm gonna bolt this thing up on each side and then basically make a plate, lay the plate over, weld it in in the middle and then we should be totally solid. All right, so I've got these things spaced. I think that these are about a half inch out. So I've got a couple different options. One is I could put a strip in here and just fill it in. Um, but I'm actually thinking I can just put a plate on each side or one that wraps around and weld it and it should be fine as well. So I'm gonna bolt these things in right now and see where we are. have a, oh Ben, look out booby, come on buddy. All right, thank you. So I've cut and re-welded this and now I've got a dry fit right now of the engine mounts and it looks great, works great. So I'm gonna pull the whole thing back off and weld this entire thing up so it's nice and strong. And then we should be good to go with step two of this whole thing. Okay, so I've welded the front side of this thing a little bit and I'm going to try to fill in this area right here with weld. I don't think I can get this because it's a little bit too much. So I'm either going to find a little piece of scrap metal and weld that in between or make a plate that sort of crosses over on each side. And I haven't really figured that out yet. But ideally I can sort of make a wedge that fits in between and weld the entire thing up. Not too bad after a grind, it looks really nice and clean. I didn't do too much on the inside because I want the structural integrity, but uh, pretty pleased with it. 
It looks pretty factory. I'm going to give it a quick coat of spray and move on. Okay, I've got the cradle in now. It bolts up just great. Next task is to modify the bars, which are these bars, so that it fits because this was actually built for a Porsche 914 and not a 911. And uh, it doesn't sync up the way it needs to. So I need to tackle that next. So this is kind of funny. I'm thinking like, how am I gonna, you know, I'm gonna have to beat these tabs into submission. Basically what I wanna do here is I wanna go from front to back. So I've got the transmission mount here. And I've got this piece here, right? So I've got this, I want this thing to run front to back. So I'm thinking I'm gonna have to beat this thing to submission, not thinking that I just have a big leverage bar. So I just gotta really put this thing in and, and, and twist it just like this. Pull it, oh no, no, not pull the engine. So basically I'm gonna weld this thing now to my new uh, extensions that I made a couple weeks ago. Okay, so I think I have a plan. I've just attempted to do my first hand notching of a tube, and that's what this is here. I just cut a little chunk off and tried to notch it to this piece. And you can do that with a bunch of math. That's what all these lines are. Uh, there's a bunch of videos on YouTube about it. Uh, I've had to ovalize this a little bit because this is a little bit smaller than this. Um, so while this is not a completely perfect fit, I think it's gonna be fine for what I need to do. Uh, the first tube I'm gonna do is the longitudinal tube. It's gonna connect from the engine cradle to the two transmission bolts. So these are gonna be mounted in the transmission bolts and then there's gonna be tubes that connect this to the engine cradle. The first thing I have to do is measure the distance of the tube from the cradle to the transmission mount. I'm giving myself a bunch of wiggle room in case I mess up, which is in the realm of possibility for this. All right, after some eh, mediocre cutting, but some really good grindage, I've got a really nice square fit. I'm gonna go check out the fit on the car, and if it's good to go, I'm gonna cut the next one. All right, success. These both look awesome. They look perfect, in fact. And one of the really cool things about this is now I know exactly how to set my chop saw and how to do it so I get a really, really good cut like this. So really, really excited about this. This looks really good. I'm gonna weld these up tomorrow. For you, it's gonna be instant, but for me, it'll be tomorrow. Okay, it's the next day and I have a list of things to do. I've gotta remove the transmission cross member, which is what the transmission is sitting on right now. So I've gotta hold it up with a jack and or jack stands. I have to slide the engine cradle a little more to the middle. I've got it all the way forward right now and it's slotted. Uh, so that'll give me a little bit of wiggle room when I want to install these things. Uh, I have to level it and make sure that it is perfectly centered within the engine. Then I've got to level the engine this way and this way. And I've got to level the car as well. So I have all those things to do right now. Uh, so it's a lot of measuring, a ton of measuring, uh, and just making sure everything is right. The plan is, let me get it right, let me get my new fangled tubes in there, and then zzz, give it a little tackaroony and see how it looks. Well, as has been a theme for the last few weeks, I don't have the right bolt. Um, these factory bolts are meant to bolt the entire transmission cradle that has motor mounts built into it. So the motor mounts are pretty thick and there's, there ends up being about a half inch of thread sticking out that you can bolt uh, to the car. Problem is I'm bolting these things directly. I wonder if I could say the word bolt a little more. 
I'm bolting these things directly to the car and you can see there's a lot more than a half inch sticking out. And certainly, I don't know, I would have to put spacers or washers that were like this thick. I'm not doing that. I happened to find these uh, in the shop from some other car thing. Um, they might be Subaru, I don't know what they are, but I'm gonna cut them down. So I'm just gonna show you guys really quick how I do it. Um, this is probably something that's useful to know in, in any kind of garage. Basically the idea is you thread a nut onto the bolt and you get it basically the length that you want it and then you use your cutting wheel to cut the thing off. That way you can unscrew the bolt and it cleans the threads up on the outside. If you get really tricky with it, <coughs> you can uh, shave the, the head down while the, the nut is still on it and get a nice clean surface. So I'm gonna try to do that right now. I've got it in my vise. I've got it set up so that there's about, probably more than I need to be honest. So I'm gonna back this thing off. Let me see here. I guess I'll give that a go, somewhere around there. There you go. So it's a pretty clean cut bolt. Hopefully it works. I'm gonna go test it out before I cut the other one. There you are. Okay, quick tour of what we are looking at here. We've got engine cradle, currently slid all the way up on its track, so I'm gonna be pushing it that way a little bit, just to get a little bit of wiggle room. And I've got the two pipes, and they are currently just press fit onto the mounts. Now I will be making a crossbar mount and then building a transmission holder from there. Um, and then these two here will connect to these guys here. So it's gonna be, this is going to uh, these guys are going to make it so the engine doesn't fall and these guys are going to make it so longitudinally it is stable. Uh, it looks pretty good in there though, doesn't it? Next I'm going to loosen these bolts and slide the cradle forward a little. I want to give myself like at least an inch of wiggle room back and forth for just future reference. I'm doing the same thing over there. I have three washers that are at the top of the welded on section just because you never know. Okay, I've got the mount basically millimeter precise on the engine. Now I gotta square the engine up and it's like, it's definitely off, it's too far back. And it's got like a little twist this way on it. So I have to muck with that a little bit. Finally, I'm gonna be looking at the lengths of the tubing that I created and make sure they are exactly the same length. I thought I would show you guys the first stages of this process, which is trying to get the engine perfectly leveled in the car. Uh, hold on, Alexa, garage left off. Okay. All right, so you can see the laser. And what I'm looking for here is I want it to, I want it to bisect this. Then I want it to bisect the crack in the case. Then I want it to bisect right through the middle of this and then right through the middle of the air intake. Of course, I just kicked it. This process is pretty painstaking. So I'm gonna take you guys, I'm gonna fiddle for a while with my level and I'm gonna make sure the engine's level, make sure this is straight. Once that's all done, I can tack these two in front. This has been particularly challenging because this engine is asymmetrical. You know, I'm used to a Porsche engine that has exactly the same symmetry. This does not do that. So I don't have a lot of reference points to measure to make sure the engine itself is square. Plus, 
the transmission is asymmetrical. So instead of like the nose of the transmission being exactly equidistant from each side, it's like off to the right a little bit. So it definitely makes this a whole challenging procedure. I think I'm close. I think I'm close enough to, to go to the next step. These are a little long. Basically the cradle welds right here. So I have like three inches of extra. I'm gonna lop off probably like that much. Go back under the car and really get them situated before um, I put a weld in there. All right there, dudes. So this bar is exactly 22 and 3 8 on each side. I don't know anything about anything, but as you guys know, the motto of this channel is we send it. Let's weld some shiz. So I have it welded up. It did not go how I had hoped uh, in terms of the welding. Like it is just hot buttered ass welding. I was hoping it was gonna be better, but I realized that like 90% of the issue is my helmet. I have a terrible welding helmet that doesn't auto darken, or I have to hold the thing, which I can see pretty well, but I have to do it one-handed. So my hands, you know, shaking all over the place. So I don't get enough to where I can get a nice consistent weld. I just gotta get a better helmet. Uh, it doesn't auto darken anymore. It was one of Amazon's best. And uh, it just doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So at some point when budget allows, I will get a better helmet. Uh, until then, I will go do what I'm doing now, which is I'm gonna go grind these welds down a little bit so I'm not completely embarrassed to show you guys. The perfect home gym accessory. Here we are, I'm pretty excited. Uh, I made one little mistake that I realized in that this one of these was just a couple of millimeters longer and I flushed them. So one's just a little couple millimeters high. It's nothing you can really notice too well, but uh, it's super solid. It feels good. Uh, this is how it goes in the car. And then there's going to be two little outriggers that come up this way and this way that attach to the chassis. So this basically effectively prevents the engine from going forward and backwards or longitudinally and the other one will prevent it from going up and down. And then the transmission mount that I'll build off of here, I'll put a kind of a curved tube and then I'll bolt the transmission up. That will stop it from twisting and from going side to side. So that'll be all my mounting spots. Uh, okay, well that's it you guys. If you haven't already, I've got a video on this channel, one of the first ones I put, which was a slideshow of how I built that very car, the Grey Ghost. So if you haven't seen that yet, go check it out. Uh, in fact, I'll link it up right now or in the description. So check that out. As always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit that notification bell, you know, as per usual. And uh, we'll stay tuned for part three of this chassis build. Until then, you guys have a great day. I'll see you next time.